Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCB RLS. For more information and to download the model of this video, you can visit us at www.jcbrlabs.org. We also provide online training, help in technical assignments. We also do freelance projects based on data science, MATLAB, communication, embedded system, Python, etc. So if you have any such requirement, then you can contact us at through our website, which is www.jcbrolabs.org or you can also mail us at info at jcbrolabs.org. So continue with uh, our tutorial video. So in today's video or in this video, we will talk about how to generate a pulse width modulation or we can also say assign pulse width modulation in Simulink. Okay. So first let's talk about a uh, little bit about uh, modulation or what is modulation. So from the basic definition of modulation, you know uh, modulation is a technique in which uh, we change one some of the property of a carrier wave in accordance with the message signal so basically in modulation we have one carrier wave uh, and then another we have a message signal okay so message signal uh, it is generally used if we want to transmit the message signal from one place to another place and this carrier wave acts like a carrier which uh, carries the information residing in the message signal along with it okay so this is about modulation okay and generally the frequency of this carrier wave uh, we can say fc uh, must be very higher than that of the message signal so message signal could be sinusoidal signal or could be any other thing now this uh, uh, if we talk about this pwm so what happens in pwm uh, you know uh, we change uh, the width of the pulse so it stands for pulse width modulation so exactly what does it mean let's say we have these pulses okay now if we talk about this pulse so this is the entire time duration of the pulse we can say a time duration of a pulse and this is the uh, on time period of the pulse or we can say width of the pulse right so if we try to change this width like right now it is like this we can also make it like this as well so overall time period will remain same but width of the pulse will be keep on varying okay so i am representing it by different colors like this so overall time period remains same for the pulse but its uh, width keep on varying okay so this is uh, known as the pulse width modulation so this change in the width depends on the amplitude of the message signal so let's say if we have a high amplitude uh, if amplitude is higher so the width of the pulse will be higher we can say right and if amplitude is low we can say okay width of the pulse is low so this is how we can encode the information or, or a message signal information in the form of the width of the pulse okay so this is the pulse width modulation technique and this pulse width modulation technique is very uh, much popular in uh, mostly in electrical system because generally if we talk about electrical drives or some other uh, system we use this uh, information to uh, to vary the speed of drives or the motors or we use this particular technique in wind inverters in which we want to generate a sine wave so this is a very uh, important concept there so now we will be talking about how can we simulate it so idea is very simple mm, we have this uh, sinusoidal wave right okay and we uh, superimpose or compare the sinusoidal wave some rectangle or triangular wave I should say triangular wave okay uh, sorry for my drawing but we'll talk about it okay so we we'll talk about like <coughs> this triangular wave so the <coughs> pulse which will be generating and that will be having the same time period as of this triangular wave so this is a very simple concept uh, the output we will compare both the signal right 
so we will compare both the signals so output will be one if this triangular wave right is greater than uh, massive signal or we can uh, say other way around let's say if output will be one if massive signal or masses uh, value or masses signal value is greater than triangular wave right that means if masses signal is greater than triangular then the output will be one and the output will be zero uh, if it is otherwise if fm vm is less than VTM. okay so through this we can generate a uh, uh, this PWM signal. Now let's see in Simulink how we will do that. So for that let's uh, open our Simulink and let's create a blank model. Okay so first of all we need a triangular wave. So <coughs> uh, generally we can use several there are several ways to generate a triangular wave in Simulink. First is let's say using a repeating sequence we can use it okay and now let's have one more thing here but you will see a interesting effect in simulation uh, let's generate a scope okay here it is so if we double click on it so it is saying a starting value that means time instance so 0 and 2 seconds right now it's in seconds the output value is 0 it will be 0 at 2 it will be 2 so it will be repeating after two second duration so right now we are simulating it for 10 seconds so let's see how it behaves okay so you will get a triangular wave of two seconds now there's a very important <laughs> interesting thing uh, the maximum value it is saying two but it is never reaching up to two in uh, simulating in this repeating sequence so generally what we do we can increase this output values to uh, we can say let's say uh, 2.5 so that it can reach up to 2 in that case okay so right now it is going beyond 2 so that is uh, the thing which we have to live with it right there is other way around like there are other method as well like we talked about we have a signal source here we have a signal generator right so we can also check it so here we have this uh, sawtooth wave and the amplitude again let's say make it one and let's make the frequency in radian per second so let's say 150 hertz of frequency and let's simulate it okay. so it is extra so again if you look at it uh, it is very high so let's simulate it for one second only and let's expand it and now you will see like again it is mm, at some point it is behaving differently and it is not reaching to minus one again okay so these are some of the problems with it so we uh, these are the problem with the simulations and now let's see uh, because we want to generate uh, a modulate a sine wave a single tone sine wave so let's generate a sine wave here okay and see what can we do with this so double click on it uh, yeah time based amplitude one let's say a frequency of 10 hertz right and we want to generate sine wave for very good quality so we'll generate one by 10,000 right so the more samples the more time will uh, the more samples will use to represent a single wave of the uh, or single cycle of the sine wave so let's combine both the signal in one plot okay let's zoom it up a little bit okay and one more thing let's have two number of plots axis and we can make it layout two okay that's good yep and let's first save this one so pwm 
simulink okay let's run it yeah okay this sign mm, this wave let's make it it is going up to 2 so let's change it to 0 0.2 right and yeah and run it so we should get more values now yeah these are the things so we can do one thing as well we can uh, logging okay display and then we can change the parameter values right where it is configure hmm Access. This is about access. Okay. There were one more access properties. Uh, oh, we can say uh, configuration properties. I think it must be here somewhere. Okay, let's what is it is. Now we want this value to uh, minus one to one. Okay. So let's double click on it and change it to this output values change it to minus one to one okay now let's save it and run it again okay so now you are seeing it so right now this is our carrier wave this blue axis blue line and this yellow line is our message signal but message signal frequency is less or high than this blue wave so let's increase this wave frequency so that we can get a better signal so let's make it to 0 0.002 so it is quite high as compared to this sine wave yep now here it is and now you have to start seeing the variation it is not reaching up to one but that's fine okay now here so if we zoom it up yep so as soon as this uh, amplitude is higher than that uh, this one uh, this uh, triangular wave the output will become one and else zero so this is how we'll be generating it so how can we do that we can simply add a comparator here so we will find a comparator here in logical and bit operation and greater than okay so we will now see one more thing so if the input value is greater than that of the another value the output will be 1 otherwise 0 so let's save it and let's run it okay okay so here is a pwm wave now there is only one problem as soon as we connect it we get a very uh, strange phenomena in simulink and that is let's expand it now everything is fine uh, when it's maximum the uh, uh, on period is maximum when it is minimum the at minimum value pulse width is minimum but the problem is for this much of duration uh, this sawtooth wave is not reaching to the maximum value alright so that is a very strange thing it was generating the other way around but as soon as we connect it it don't generate it okay. we can also see it right right now there is no kind of dip here ok so we can try to remove these things by either changing this time period so let's make it to oh ok so let's uh, make it to 1.5 so that at least uh, we can get something uh, we can get some better result and let's run it ok now it's very much perfect uh, we can zoom it up okay now uh, <coughs> if we zoom it so when for the maximum amplitude width is high maximum and for minimum pulse width is very low okay so for maximum pulse width is high for minimum pulse width is low so this is how we have 
uh, a kind of uh, generated uh, pulse width modulated wave okay so in this the width of the uh, this uh, square pulse is being varied according to the amplitude of the message signal okay so we can also check by changing this frequency so this particular wave uh, plays a critical role in inverters and all those things because right now we are generating a sinusoidal pulse width modulation as well okay so here this uh, uh, pulse width has been uh, compressed you can say uh, modulated as per the sine wave so we can write this and we can expand it to verify our results for maximum pulse width is maximum for minimum pulse width is minimum and so on okay so this is how we can generate a pulse width modulation signal and simulink so if you have any suggestions or any doubts then you can let us know by commenting below this video okay so that's it for this video finally we also provide online training help in technical assignments we also do freelance projects based on data science python machine learning etc so if you have any such requirement then you can let us know by uh, contacting us through our website which is www.jcbrolabs.org or you can also mail us at info at jcbrolabs.org info at jcbrolabs.org okay so that's it for this video thank you